My name is Tony Ford. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Artfire.com and the founder of Maker House, the world's first artisan-driven makerspace that's going to be launched right here in Tucson, Arizona, in this historic mansion behind me. This is the Bates Mansion in downtown Tucson, and it's a historic, beautiful space with wonderful rooms, a very cool courtyard, and some things that most Tucsonans have not seen. It's essentially been off limits to the public for almost 70 years, but we're going to take a look inside today, and I'm going to show you around. So come with me. Thousands of people had driven under the Stone Avenue underpass just north of me and past these giant green wooden gates on the Bates Mansion courtyard. These gates were chained up in the 70s and walled over in early 2000s. We took the walls off and the chains off and now we're going to open these gates up and go inside and show you what you may have been missing just driving past. As we go through this tour today, you're going to see a lot of construction. That's because the process of creating Maker House actually started 60 or 90 days ago. Artfire.com, a local Tucson software company that runs an online artisan marketplace, and the building owner, Prudent Preservation Partners, has also been upgrading the building from power and HVAC and roofing to make the space welcoming for Tucson artists, creatives, and entrepreneurs. This space is a 5,000 square foot courtyard that's hidden behind 10 and a half foot high walls in the heart of downtown Tucson. We took out six tons of concrete in the middle, put in 27 cubic yards of topsoil, and installed a subterranean irrigation system. That irrigation system puts 90% of the water directly to the roots of the plants, so we only have to water that grass about twice a day for two and a half minutes, even in the heat of the summer, so that we can have a grassy area that's shaded in the morning for yoga or tai chi or martial arts classes. It will be a performance space, a gathering space, a classroom space, a laboratory space for Maker House and extend what's going on inside Maker House to the outside as well. So we are already growing some heirloom plants, plants from native seed search. We're doing some seed harvesting. We have plans and instructors already for vertical food production and hydroponics. Behind me at the very far end of this courtyard you'll see some fruit trees and under those trees is where we plan to put the stage for performances. Poetry slams, story nights, music performances, those types of events will all take place in this courtyard. The first room you enter when you walk through the main entrance of Maker House will be our artisan coffee bar. This will feature a 22 foot long classroom sized coffee bar where you can not only order artisan coffee brewed by very talented baristas, you can also take classes on hand brewing or latte art. This space uh, actually is, is a pretty beautiful space. It used to be a cocktail bar when this was the Mountain Oyster Club. We've put in a new ceiling, we've put in some new floors, and we're working on getting the coffee bar built this week. We've also partnered with Yellow Brick Coffee Roasters, and Anna over at Yellow Brick has really pulled in some amazing coffees to be served here, including things that are award-winning in Europe, but have never been imported to the United States. Trust me, they're really good. An example of the challenges of construction in this space and rebound of this space, this wall behind me no one knew was brick. When we first got here, there was some suspicion that it was not even a load-bearing wall that had been added after the fact sometime in the 80s or 90s. However, when we chipped away plaster and stucco and drywall and more plaster, we found this beautiful 1950s vintage brick wall underneath and clearly from the I-beam in it, it is a load-bearing wall. So we're making these kind of discoveries all the time in this project. This wall will stay this way in the coffee bar, um, probably with just a, a light finish on it, and a larger bar top here so that people can pull up a stool, plug in their laptop, and get to work. The room we're standing in used to be a swimming pool. Actually, I'm standing right on top of what used to be a swimming pool, a 34-foot pool that is now a room we call the salon. This was once known as the bull ring during the days of the Mountain Oyster Club. And we've done some things in here already to bring this space back to its original state. The beams above me were all painted over when we originally moved in. They've all been sandblasted, restained, and refinished. We put in a whole new floor that was carpeted at one point. And this is going to be our main classroom and discussion space. When we first met with the interior designer, I, I told that designer I wanted this space to be a sacred space to learning, a cathedral for business and education. And that's what we're shooting for in the salon. It's quite a large space. It has room for a really long table. About 20, 25 people can sit at that for board meetings or community events. And that table will split up into four tops. So if you just have people drinking coffee or having small meetings in here, we can use this space in a multi-purpose way. So 
space you move into right off of the coffee bar is a space we're calling the lounge. And this will be a space with some overstuffed chairs, couches, an area to come in and actually read a book or work on your iPad or have a conversation with friends, do a little knitting. It's a beautiful space for a lot of reasons. It has some really beautiful beams. We're standing on a 200 year old cross cut beam mesquite floor. It almost looks like tile. The grout lines are actually sawdust and glue. And this floor was originally laid in 1800 in Chihuahua, Mexico in a schoolhouse. CTR Bates, the owner of the Bates Mansion, when it was a private residence, brought this floor back up from Mexico and reinstalled it here in the Bates Mansion. So a little tip, if you want a really durable floor, apparently mesquite is the way to go. There are four or five beautiful fireplaces scattered throughout this space, and this one in the lounge will get an electric insert so you can kind of sit and knit or read by the fire. These fireplaces have gorgeous marble mantles and uh, marble frames around them. This one kind of looks like wood at first, that's what we thought it was, but it's in fact some gold paint that's on the marble that we're gonna go through and remove. These kind of very homey mansion touches are part of this space and make it more than just a commercial space. It actually feels like a maker house. The room I'm standing in now is called the Corona Room at Maker House. It's our main workroom, and it's named for the massive Salvador Corona mural that's behind me. This is a beautiful piece and one of the best examples of his large format work. It features amazing detail, little pieces of glass, etched glass, tiny pieces of gold foil. Now, Salvador Corona was a bullfighter in Mexico, and when he was injured, he became a painter and became quite well known in Tucson in the Southwest and even internationally. The Duchess of Windsor owned some of his pieces and his work was also gifted to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This beautiful piece is being restored thanks to the help from Prudent Preservation Partners, the building owner. The room itself used to be uh, an exterior room. It was a swimming pool, one of the three swimming pools in this space. And it has a, a giant kind of arched ceiling that's plexiglass. We've redone the floors, we're dropping in new lighting, and what we'll feature in here is a kind of a general workspace that's multifunctional. You can come in and have a knitting group meeting or a scrapbooking meeting or a book club or play a board game or work during the day. It also can be set up for theater seating with AV equipment so that we can do about a hundred, uh, any event that would have about a hundred people in here. Kind of let your mind wander. What type of events would you want to do in a space like this? Everything from music to speeches and lectures to large classes. This room featuring 1950s vintage teak floors in a herringbone pattern and some beautiful beams above me that are pulled from a railroad trestle bridge in Winkleman, Arizona is the bullpen for the Artfire software development team. We feel it's vital when we're dealing with a makerspace to not just bring in technology or not just bring in arts, but to bring in business as well so that we've got opportunities for artists to see the commercialization of their work if they want to go out and sell to the market. And we have people who are working in the art business end of things so that there can be that cross-pollination between artists, creative entrepreneurs, business people, investors, funders, and techies. In order to build a really effective collaboration space, you have to have space for people to collaborate. This will be a conference room for not only our coworkers, but our artists. A space where we can have people from the community or people from the business community come in and meet with artists, makers, creators, inventors, and talk about things like uh, business commercialization, arts events, opportunities for arts in the community. There's several of these meeting spaces being built at Maker House, and we'll use them for anything from small classes to consultations and as just general conference room for our coworkers. One of the really the exciting things about this project is being able to discover parts of the history of Tucson. So while this house became a mansion in 1956, it originally has its roots in row houses in downtown Tucson. Behind me you can see a truth window that shows you some of the original adobe, the 18 inch thick adobe walls that were part of this house, perhaps dating back as far as the 1800s. There's a lot of history in this building, there's a lot of history in downtown Tucson. And to take high tech and fine art and mix it with the history and culture of southern Arizona and of Tucson specifically is very exciting. Thank you.